What I really like about this is we've got three different types of wallets that are offering self-custody. So I guess what I'd like to do is start off for people who might be unfamiliar. We'll go down the line. Paul, would you introduce yourself and talk about what Edge Wallet is? Uh, thanks, Rice. So um, Edge, well, first of all, myself. Uh, my name is Paul Poy, CEO and co-founder of Edge. Um, and our company is really trying to drive self-custody to the masses. Our goal is to make self-custody look like Web2 custodial services think um, think the kind of apps that a Coinbase or Kraken would deploy into an app store. Um, the goal is to look and feel just like those, but give people a very high level of privacy, autonomy, and control while still offering the functionality that people look for in a custodial exchange, but now getting that with a what we call a self-custody exchange, integrating with many different you know, decentralized exchanges and fiat on and off ramps. Um, and CFI exchanges in order to deliver that functionality. Uh, I do appreciate Edge Wallet as being a great mobile wallet, so thank you for being on the panel. I've had the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Bobby Lee from Ballet. Would you like to say a few words about yourself in sure. Ballet? <clears throat> My name is Bobby Lee. I, uh, <clears throat> people at this conference know me as the brother of Charlie. Uh, I started this, so Ballet is my second startup. I, from my first startup, 10, what is it? <clears throat> 11 years ago, I did the dark side thing, which is uh, running an exchange in China, of all places. So uh, finally that, I got enough of that and came to the light side, which is very, the very important. I think self-custody is so important. So I dedicated the second half of my crypto career to making self-custody easy and affordable to regular people. And that's why I created Ballet. We make these non-electronic cards that allow you to store you know, hundreds and thousands of cryptos and NFTs. And it's very easy. There's no setup. So I can tell you more about that. But the, the most important part is we invented and created this product to really make self-custody easy for regular people so that you don't have to leave your coins on an exchange and you don't have to get worry about getting hacked and you don't have to worry about not having your coins when you need to and having your private keys in your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Tom Delito from Arculus, do you mind introducing yourself and talking about Arculus? Sure, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tom Delito. I'm the head of product at Arculus. Uh, so Arculus is actually part of a larger company called Capo Secure that makes uh, a very, very overwhelming percentage of the world's metal payment cards and has for about 20 years or publicly listed on NASDAQ uh, here in the US. So if you have a metal credit card in your wallet, we probably made it in one of our factories in New Jersey. If you have a metal Amex or Robinhood, Chase, you name it, we probably made those cards. About three years ago, launched Arculus with the realization that the chips on those cards were powerful enough to do all the cryptographic signatures necessary for a full HD wallet. So we developed uh, an HD wallet uh, on a metal payment card form factor uh, that all requires three-factor authentication in order to use your, your, your on-chain assets. You need your biometrics to get into the Arculus app, you need your pin that's stored on the actual physical card, and you tap your card to the back of your phone uh, to send the unsigned transaction to the card to get signed on here. So your private keys live on the secure element on this card. Uh, and without all three factors, your crypto is never moving. So again, the idea, uh, much like the other wallets here, is to, is to broaden the tent, to bring more people to true self-custody. Um, and to all, for us, it's also very much about sort of driving it towards real-world uh, use cases around payments and making uh, all sorts of cryptos, things like Litecoin, actually usable in real-world payment scenarios. All right, so this again, this is about self self custody because like holding your crypto, not your keys, not your crypto. I like the term that you used on X saying no, no keyers. Is that the term you used? Non keyers for the people that still have their crypto with exchanges. I guess we call them no keyers, no keyers. they don't own their keys. Uh, this is something that I really wanted to talk about in this panel because it's regulation. Because we're seeing a lot of you know, obviously, there's a lot of there's not, it's not very clear as far as the regulation, and I think we're getting ready to start seeing things happen. Um, I don't know, it was a couple months ago, FBI had posted something on their X account encouraging people to n use uh, custodial wallets that you don't have your private keys to, trying to make it as if it's a bad thing to have your control of your crypto. What are your thoughts on that aspect of regulatory compliance trying to in self-custody and make you use custodial services? So I read through that FBI article pretty carefully. And if you wordsmith it, 
and analyze it, you'll notice that they were really careful about their word choice. They said, you're at risk if you use um, serv products and services that aren't licensed. And for the average user that reads that article, they'll think, okay, well, what's not licensed? What is licensed? What's not licensed? Knowing that a vast majority of crypto isn't licensed because it doesn't need to be licensed. Um, and so you're right. They're effectively the closest things to the licensed services are the licensed exchanges. But what they're referencing in the fear tactic is that many unlicensed services, which are custodial, though, are the ones where people have lost the money. But they don't make that distinguishing factor, right? The licensed ones, sure, they almost certainly have to be the custodial services. They did mention people are losing and have lost money in, in crypto and these unlicensed services, which primarily are the exchanges that aren't licensed or are you know, outside of the, the jurisdiction of the United States, since that is an FBI warning that was given out. But they steer clear from saying that you should be using custodial versus non-custodial. Um, they blanket the term um, with license just to create fear of the entire crypto ecosystem because there are very few options. Uh, but you're right, they are driving people to the custodial services, which is one that they can definitely surveil, they can control, they can freeze funds if they needed to, which makes it at that point really just another bank, part of the banking system. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, so I, I think it's terrible. I think that article, that FBI perspective, I think it's fear tactic. It's like you said, it's FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt. I think it's fake news, very terrible tactics. And the word I want to emphasize on is about control. So what cryptocurrency gave us, you know, a little over a decade ago, 15 years ago, is the ability for us normal people, citizens, average Americans, or any citizen anywhere in the world, to have true control of your financial assets. Right? It's about control. Because prior to cryptocurrency, all of our financial assets, aside from a few hundred dollars of cash we have in our pockets, are controlled by the governments, which can be seized, which can be taken away, which can be frozen, which can be limited on a withdrawal basis, cash withdrawal, which can be questioned if you want to take your money out of your own bank account. Right? It's all about control. So with crypto, it's unfortunate that still a lot of crypto assets are still in custodial hands where the owners don't have real control over them, including ETFs, by the way, right? right? So ETFs are great for the market overall, a lot of new people coming in, but the reality, just like with an exchange, you don't have control of that crypto asset that you purchased through your brokerage account. You don't have control, direct control over those uh, coins on Coinbase. And with self-custody, you know, even though we're technically competitors, but we're on the same side. We are fighting for you to, have, to allow you to have easy control of your crypto. And the, what the FBI did was to muddy the waters and talk about, you know, licensed and licensed. You know, I don't have to get a license to sell a good product that allows you to control your own crypto. I mean, you know, the U.S. is not a communist. It's not an authoritarian country. We don't need a license to sell good, good stuff. Right, and they make it as if like licensed services products are better than unlicensed ones. Well, in some cases, in some ways they are, but in the case of crypto, any sort of licensed custodial service, by definition, is you rel relinquishing your control of your coins to them, in which case the FBI or other government agencies can seize control, take your assets, and even with prevent you from withdrawing it. Just, I mean, it's just a mess of stuff, yeah. Don't get me started. No, you, you, started. Do you have anything you want to share with that? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I completely agree. You know, a lot of this has to do with the fact that it's it's really easy to muddy the waters because the regulations are so unclear, right? So it's really easy to put out sort of a vague press release and go, "Be careful, license, boo," right? Be careful of that. And generally, what they're talking about in, the, in that case was things like money transmitter licenses, which is a level of ob obscurity. Like we're talking about, like you know, laws that were written in like the 1940s, trying to to legislate around things that are happening now, right? It just doesn't fit. So you have these weird laws that we're trying to like put square pegs into round holes. Um, you know, that, and that's, what, that's been some of the things with like the, uh, the lightning services, right? Lightning services have been pushed as like companies that are supposed to have money transmitter licenses, which is an incredibly expensive thing because it's not like you go get one license, you have to go to 50 states and get 50 money transmitter licenses, which is an incredible regulatory burden. 
right? So there is a huge amount of regulatory uncertainty, and that makes lawyers at companies like mine super nervous, right? They, they want to make sure that we're not doing anything that's going to get us in trouble with, with, the, with the lawyers. But at the same time, like logically and pragmatically, right, we are all providing technology, right? We are not money transmitters. We are not custodians. We don't hold your funds. Like that is precisely what we don't want to do. We want to, hold, we want to give you the tools to hold your keys, to control your own stuff for your own self-sovereignty. Um, and from that point of view, that's why we're not regulated from the point of view of money transmitters and custodians and things like that, because that's not what we do. Okay, so to keep with the, the regulatory thing, with, with us seeing different politicians talk about the fact that we need to kind of get rid of self-custody and things to that effect, I'm curious individually, has is there any sort of regulatory pressure, even though there's nothing been clarified for you guys as companies with wallets that are self-custody to add KYC? AML, like, is there any pressure for that to kind of happen at this point? There was a proposal in Europe. They were going to require KYC on non-custodial wallets. It was one part of the proposal around Mika, um, and that was rejected. So that so self custody is still legal in Europe. Yay, yay, Europe, good job. Um, but they were sort of going around that. And the other place where, uh, from a regulatory perspective, I think self custody is at risk is with the CBDCs, right? You know, I think. Probably 99.999% of people in this room are like, boo, CBDCs, we hate that, um, and with good reason. One of the things that I see when I go to regulatory events is that very often the regulators are much more on the side of custodial CBDCs are the thing that makes sense because from their perspective, it's what makes sense. Generally speaking, uh, regulators that are pushing down like that CBDC route aren't thinking about self-custody. Um, and that is just sort of another reason why CBDCs are sort of a terrible idea. They don't even understand the concept of self-custody. Yeah. I think regulators don't. They think assets being held by a third-party financial institution is the norm, and they think that's the only way. Yeah. It's, it's really sad, right? In fact, it, that's how we thought before Bitcoin, right? In the 1980s and 90s, that's how we thought. And now we're awake. So the fear that um, self-custody might be getting clamped down on uh, as far as regulation hasn't been due to precise regulation coming down or getting proposed. By and large, it's been by the enforcement actions that have gone down. And we saw a few wallet companies get taken down um, and some exit, uh, at least the United States. And so what I like to do is say... You which know, wallets? Like self, which wallets got taken down? Uh, so on the mostly, there's mostly on the privacy side. And so it was uh, Samurai, obviously, that was taken down. Um, as well, another Lightning wallet exited the US. Right? So I, a, soon after Samurai was, uh, was taken down. And the thing I like to say about self-custody is it's not what I call a 100% line in the or whether or not you're a money transmitter is not a line in the sand. It's a whole gray area. And what does a company or a protocol do to stay as clear from the term money transmission or in the case of samurai money laundering like what do you what are you doing to facilitate those services or not and i like to say it's not that you are or you aren't it's how good of a lawyer does the government need to make that case do they need an intern can an intern make the case that you are doing money laundering? Or do they need their top-notch, best of the best to make a very well-founded case against you? And so clearly, as a developer and a builder in the space, you don't want to be building such that intern lawyer can make the case against you. You want to be building where their absolute best lawyers need to. But I would, I would say, in all honesty, there's nothing 100% uh, clear from being a money transmitter or a... Uh, a possible facilitator of money laundering if you really wanted to get, go as full draconian as the U.S. could become, and that's the big fear. If they go full draconian, they could make that argument, but it would be much, 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 much harder, and so the take is steer clear from that. Definitely self-custody is what has steered clear from that for a long time, which is why if you look at back to when you first got involved, Bobby, I, I knew about you in 2013, and I think you were in business since like 2012 or so. Um, the biggest companies or the biggest targets were fully custodial services, and you felt that, obviously. Um, but as they start targeting and regulating the fully custodial, now they start chipping away at the arguably you know, helping transmit money, i.e. lightning, um, or arguably helping money launder, i.e. Uh, 
tumbling services and mixers. So that's kind of where I feel like the regulatory landscape is, is they're going for the low-hanging fruit first and any products and services and people that are contributing to allowing their intern to make the case. But I'm, I'm hopeful, given for the U.S., uh, you know, maybe Europe too, that as a free country where we, where we value personal liberty and freedom, I'm hopeful that self-custody will remain uh, allowed. You know, it's, it hasn't been tested, you know, in terms of whether it, the Constitution allows for it, but I am pretty hopeful that it, it will be fine. And so part of the reason I asked that question is because I've noticed that there's been some wallets that have discontinued their services, not just moved out of the United States. Um, Monarch being one with my former sponsor, Robert Beatles, and then um, CoinFlip introduced Olive, and they did a big, huge marketing thing with that, and they just laid that to rest. Um, and I was curious if there was something happening behind the scenes that was causing some of these wallets to close up shop. And that's the reason I wanted to ask if there was actually any pressure to do the KYC yeah, I, AML. I, uh, you know, we don't have the FBI or the government agents knocking down our door about that. But what we do face is, for example, we're trying to sell these um, physical loaded products, physical light coins you can find in our booth. Uh, this is no different than the Cassatius coins from a decade ago. And uh, we had to register with FinCEN as a money transmitter, money service business. And state by state, we would have to, certain states like New York, the, mo the more onerous ones, onerous ones, we would have to get a money transmitter license uh, because they classify this as money transmission when I sell a loaded metal coin to ship it by mail to you. It's, it's a little bit unfortunate, um, but we don't have the resources to fight them and take it to the Supreme Court. If it wasn't loaded, would you be required to? If it was if it's unlo unloaded, unloaded? Unloaded, we could, we could okay. ship it. Like the, uh, the cards, we could just send it, and you could load it yourself, yeah. Okay, okay that's good to know. Yeah, I have a history with uh, NYDFS. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot. Yeah, no, I mean, look, like for me, you know, self custody. I go back to the like back to the to 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 the to the foundation, right? You know, the first words of the Bitcoin light paper are talk about you know a, a, a purely peer to peer version of electronic cash for payments that allow you know payments from one party to another without going through a financial institution. Like that's the first line. That is the key to like if we lose that, you lose the basic foundation of everything that we, that that's been built from that point forward. Right, so I think it's very, very important that we don't ever lose the option for self-custody. I'm not someone who says, like, you absolutely have to be, everyone has to be 100% self-custodial self all the time. People deserve the choice. If you want to use a trusted custodian, use a trusted custodian. If you want to split your holdings between some custodial, non-custodial, whatever you want to do, a bear, a bear wallet, an HD wallet, like, whatever combination of things you want, you should have the option to do that. Right, it shouldn't be dictated that you have to do one thing or the other. All right, so it looks like we're over our time limit. So if, if, I don't know if you guys have like any quick final thoughts. We can go down the line and wrap things up. I'll do a quick contradicting, um, contradicting last closing thought to what Tom said. While I do believe you should have the option, I don't think people should use any custodial services, period. Um, because the danger in saying that, yeah, use this and use that, is if we don't have a majority of people using uh, self-custody, it'll be far easier for governments to squash that option because it won't be hurting anyone. Good point. So, Mr. Lee, any final thoughts? Um, yeah, so, so the message is not just for people in this room. Obviously, I, I assume vast majority of you hold your coin self-custody. But it's really for you to bring that message back to your family, to your friends, and really emphasize the importance of self-custody to them. And for them, you know, if they're sophisticated, buy the appropriate wallets. But for those who are new, I highly recommend the, you know, self-serving the ballet cards or the loaded coins. But really get people on board to crypto, to Litecoin, to whatever, and self-custody. Yeah. Thank you. Tom, do you have any final thoughts? Uh, just the last thing I'll say is, like, for me, um, you know, I like to go back to the, uh, you know, the, the old Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie, right? You know, with great power comes great responsibility. That's self-custody, right? It's great power, but it's also great responsibility because you are truly the, the holder of your keys. And if you lose them, if you don't control them, if you don't actually take that responsibility seriously, you don't really deserve to have that power, right? And that's part of it, right? You have to understand that combination of, of the power and the responsibility of self-custody. 
Well said, well said. And I really appreciate you guys, what each one of your companies are doing. So shout out to Edge, Ballet, and Arculus. And I appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope you guys have a great experience for the rest of the Litecoin Summit 2024. So that was uh, completely over my head. So quickly.